we're gonna do a few things today, y'all. Look, I've got some seeds. I got some seeds from one of my healthier summer squashes in the garden. So I'm gonna plant those today. It is July. And so I should still get some fruit off these guys. Because our first frost, frost is not until November. And I got me some more sunflowers. First, come see what I got going on. But y'all, I got this. Nate helped me bring this big old barrel out here. You see this? I put this on top for right now, but I want to get a nice screen so we're not having any mosquito issues. Right now, this is just here to keep basically the cats out from jumping in. I'm gonna collect some weeds today from my garden. And we're gonna start stuffing weeds in this barrel. And it's already got water in it. I don't really need water in it yet, but it was just kind of fun to fill up, so we did it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna start scooping it out for uh, you. Oh, it's fine, baby. It's fine. And I'm gonna get some weeds. I have some weeds I collected over here from the time when I planted those tomatoes. They're doing pretty good. See them? They're looking pretty happy, I think. Oh, see? Big old pile right here. I've got these weeds. Random weeds growing here and there. So I like using the weeds to heal my soil. That's what we're gonna do here by making this weed concoction. Now anytime I need to pull up some weeds, it's gonna go right in the barrel. And I should just need to mix it. I've heard some people say you can mix it every day, mix it once a week. We're just gonna kind of play it by ear. It's so my first time doing this. It generally takes a few weeks. Let's kind of see how it goes. Look at all my buckwheat. I've been picking tons of tomatoes. You see they got quite sick at the bottom here. I'm gonna pick these today because I've been having issues with just them dropping. So I gotta pick all these guys. I already made some delicious, fresh tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce. So good. We have this one little tomato. It's a beautiful yellow. I think it's, it's called lemon something. Here's one of them. This one got a little cracked, you see? They were ready pretty early. Healthiest ones that I have here. I'm gonna save seeds from them. I've been saving seeds from quite a few of these. Look, that mushroom basket, it's got tons of them. This looks like a Kellogg's breakfast to me. Okay, so I'm gonna grab these weeds. Look at this thing. This thing's just going. See, it's, I'm just gonna let it climb up here. And it's growing a pumpkin. This looks like a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin to me. Oh, I got quite a few beans on here. I haven't been picking beans off this thing. I've just been kind of letting it go. It's just fun. I planted this for fun. I'm gonna grab these weeds. But look at this. These Jarndales are doing so good. Very prolific. So, also with the Long Island cheese. Long Island cheese is doing great. And of course, this thing is just going crazy, doing really well. Some of them are definitely starting to get sick and that's all right, I'm just gonna let them go. And this guy, I think it's called a white boar. I don't know, I can't remember. I'll look it up. This one, I have four plants here and it only made two squashes. So I don't think I'm doing that one again. But I'm gonna collect seeds from this Jarndale and Long Island cheese and that Tahitian melons, awesome. I already got some weeds and we'll pull some more. Excuse me, plant. Take it all this. Look at these. We got two of them growing on top of each other. So I did have, I didn't, ended up putting hammocks on the squash are fine but my melons need hammocks. I lost one melon, it fell. So I put hammocks on all my melons because I don't want to lose any of them. I'm gonna stuff this in here. Oop, Oop I just got dirt all over myself. So I'm just gonna keep filling this up and just mixing it probably just once a week. So all these weeds, anything that I got growing, see? See this stuff here? All this. Just shake off the dirt as much as possible. Just pop it in there. This is kind of fun. 
you put it in there with the dirt too? I try to shake it mostly off. I guess the dirt's just gonna have more bugs, right? Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. I don't think it's a exact science. You just gotta bring out your inner kid. Reminds me of being a kid and getting a big pot from the kitchen and grabbing random things outside, wild onions, and then cooking them up on the pot. Make soup. <laughs> making soup. Yeah. I'm making soup. <laughs> I'm making weed soup. So this is fun. I'm finally, I'm glad we finally did this. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Oh, there's already a bug in here. I don't, I don't want you to die. Don't die! It's a little worm. Oh no. He needs to be rescued. I'll rescue him. I'll save you. I see these guys a lot. I don't know what kind they look. There's quite a few bugs. Hmm. That's funny. I don't know what kind those are. I don't know if they're good or bad, but I'm gonna get this little guy. Ah! I've been seeing these quite a bit around. I'm trying to save him without squishing him. They're probably bad for the garden, but they're oh. cute and they're oh. fuzzy. And these little guys, they're like an orange black. I don't know what they are. They're probably bad for the garden. Probably. I need to come out here with my scissors and trim some of these. This pumpkin has been getting quite a bit of powdery mildew. Yeah, I made the best salsa. Y'all, I made a whole half a gallon of it. Gosh, so, good. <laughs> so good. It's almost gone. We've almost eaten it all. It's just so I could drink it. That's how good it is. And y'all, I finally processed all those squash. feels good to have that done. It's easy to get overwhelmed when you're in this time of year when you're starting to get a rush of food all at once. Because I needed to get that done because I'm now I've got tomatoes coming through that are just, they're ripening like that. Some of these got attacked by the pests, but I haven't been seeing army worms. I think we beat them. I think we beat those army worms. We defeated the armies. I did, yes. We defeated the armies. Because you recruited your I got knights. my knights, my <laughs> knights in shimmer and armor. <laughs> Tobacco is taller than me. They got attacked a little bit by the tomato hornworms. Tomato hornworms love tobacco. In fact, I think they love it better more than tomatoes. Well, it's probably a little bit addictive. You think that's what it is? <laughs> These cracked out tomato worms hooked on tobacco. Oh, my buckwheat coming up. This row, I did it pretty heavy, see? Look at these little guys. I got quite a few of these big old monster tomatoes. I think this is a Kellogg's breakfast. You don't remember? Um, no, I know I had to rip out some Kellogg's breakfasts on this row because they were getting sick and that's why I put the tomatillos right here. See, I, I got see. my tomatillos coming in. I love tomatillos, they look like a Chinese lamp. Those little paper lamps. Yeah, the buckwheat's doing great though, and um, excited about these peanuts. That's gonna be just fun. That's just something I did for fun. This is a peanut? Yeah, that's a peanut. They have little yellow flowers, you see? They're pretty. Corn, getting tall. And the thocks are act, the, the thocks, the stalks are actually thick. They're thickening up. I've, every year I've done corn, they just have had issues where they just don't get thick enough and they're always falling over. I did the three sisters thing last year and that didn't work out. The beans just took them out. Remember that? The beans just took out the corn. So the three sisters was? Was the three sisters is corn, bush beans, squash. So the squash provided ground cover. Yes, that was the idea. The corn provides a trellis for the beans to climb on. Yeah. 
But what actually happened was... The beans took out the corn. Even though I planted the corn way, way before the beans. But the beans took them out. Oh, look. Oh, what is it? Look, little, little corn, a little oh, bit of corn yay. silk poking look. up. Yeah, see, look, this one too. Fun. What's this little guy with all the flowers? I don't know. I don't know a lot of these peppers. I just put them out here. I collected some seeds from my peppers last year, the bell peppers. Mm -hmm. This could be one of those. These sunflowers are going. Look at how tall they are. Remember when I planted them? Oh, these are also peanuts. I need to come in here and I looked this particular weed up, y'all, and I can't remember the name of it, but you can actually eat it. It's beneficial. People use it for certain things health-wise. It's kind of neat to look up all these different weeds and realize they're actually edible and they can be good for you. So yeah, we need to weed this area and we'll put that in our little weed tea. It's gonna be great. Then I can just scoop it out and put it directly onto my plants. I'll plant some of those seeds. I've been collecting lots of seeds. Any tomato plant that's doing pretty good and healthy, I've been collecting those and saving them. I want next year in my garden, I just want to plant things for the most part from seeds that I collected. If you buy seeds next spring, where were they raised? If you buy seeds in the store or wherever you buy your seeds, they're coming from an area that is most likely being very babied in a high tunnel. It's not out in the elements. Marl, come here. And your theory is that these plants would be weaker. weaker. Yeah, definitely. And But these plants that I'm growing here are growing out in my environment. They're going to be a hardier plant for sure. I think it will work out. So you're just picking the ones who have resisted our local diseases the, the best. For the most part, yeah. They've grown the best with our sunlight, with our temperature, with our environment. Yes, so I'm hoping that next year we won't have as big of a problem with the sicknesses that we've been having a lot of issues with. It doesn't seem to matter what I do, they just, they just get sick. And I think that is possible to have a tomato plant going strong and doing well until the frost kills it because I've seen it happen. And I want to be able to have that in my garden to where they're not just pittering out because they're getting so sick. Because you see that a lot of them at the bottom are just sick at this point. Yeah, I remember Rusty, our neighbor across the street at Fort Benning down in Columbus, Georgia, he had the biggest tomato plant I've ever seen in my life. It was literally taking up half of his yard in the front yard. He it didn't even trellis it? He didn't trellis it. It was just growing on the ground and that thing produced. Didn't he count how many? It was over two. It was two. It was an unbelievable number. It was like 230 or 260 From something. From one tomato plant, and it kept going until it, the frost. So it's possible. I've seen it. Wish we could have saved those seeds, huh? Oh, gosh darn it. Yeah, I collected these from one of my healthiest summer squashes. And since we have so much time still with our seasons, I'm going to plant them and we're going to see what happens. Mammoths. I wasn't very happy with the what's it called chocolate cherry. I also got this one, double sun king. They, these didn't even come up really. I mean, they came up, but then they didn't grow very well. wasn't very happy with those. But the chocolate cherries were just the blossom was too small. I just pictured it to be bigger than that and more magnanimous, and it just wasn't. So I decided, you know. We're just gonna get these massive mammoth ones. And then I'll collect seeds from them. Cause sunflower seeds are expensive and you don't get that many. Although this one actually gave me quite a few. I'm kind of surprised. I brought them all outside here. Water these little guys. So now throughout the week, I can just pull up any weeds that I didn't get buried well enough when I put grass clippings down or whatever and we'll put them straight into that bucket of water and that is how I will fertilize my plants from now on instead of having to buy that fish fertilizer which works great but I'd like to be able to 
make my own stuff and become more self-sufficient. My little tomato art, this is a little type of cherry tomato. Hmm, that's good. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick all these and just let them finish ripening in the house since they're wanting to drop and all that. I don't wanna lose them. It's really better just to pick them earlier even though they're not 100% ripe. That way you're not having issues with bugs eating them or paste tomatoes just start falling to the ground even before they're really ripe. So I'm just kind of picking them all and I'll let them ripen up into gross in the house. And when they're ready, we'll go make some yummy pasta sauce. It's getting heavy. You're gonna need a bucket, baby. I know. All right, y'all, I'm gonna get these guys in and see if there's any other stragglers here. And we'll see you next time.